What's up everybody? I'm pretty excited today because I have an electrical problem with my truck and we're gonna go ahead and troubleshoot it which is freaking awesome. If you guys remember I modified the headlights in this thing so that way when I turn the high beams on the low beams stay on and it was during that install that I discovered a problem. It was something like I was probing the low beam wire just to make sure that I had the right wire and instead of going closer to battery voltage which was like 12 volts it was reading like 10 something all along here there's been a problem with a voltage drop to the low beams you know what I'm saying and, and we're gonna find that shit I'm just saying this is fucking awesome because you guys know me I love diagnosing shit and I love anything involving electrical stuff so I'm real excited now once again to keep things kind of do it yourself we're not going to go by the OEM schematic because Sometimes reading them things can be a real bitch. So pretty much what I did was I isolated the schematics just to show only the low beam wiring. So our low beam circuit in this pickup, as you're going to see, it goes from fuse number eight in the underhood fuse block through a connector, through the actual headlight switch that you turn on. It then goes to a DRL module as an input. However, these two wires are spliced together. And then it goes to your high beam switch. You know, you, you pull the stalk and it turns the high beams on, pull the stalk again, it turns them off. And goes up here to a DRL relay and then comes down. There's a splice where the left and right low beams are spliced together and then they each have their own ground. I thought it was important to note that each headlight is grounded independently. Now, during the course of this test, the doors are going to be open. I made sure that the dome lights or nothing was on in the truck. So he's off, they're off. There's nothing on, we're cool. I'm gonna pull this headlight lens out of here. So I think that you can't even get to the headlight, you know, between the battery and the uh, upper radiator support. So, it just we're just gonna pull it out. Somebody tried to tell me taking these out was fast and easy. Well, I never heard of such bullshit. So I got the headlight out of there and this perhaps could be the most important part of this uh, test. The most important part is getting our T-pin situated in this connector far enough that it maintains contact for one and does not pop out for another. I'm just pulling this bulb out so you guys can get a better view of what I'm doing. Try to do it so you can see actually how far this T-pin goes down in here. There. See, she has to go down there pretty far to make contact with the metal inside the connector. Yeah, it would be easier to do it with the uh, connector unplugged. However, when you're doing voltage drop test, it has to be done under load. So it has to be plugged in. This test we're doing now is going to do two things. It's going to give us our low beam voltage. And it's also going to let us know if our T-pin is inserted correctly. Because as I found out the other day, it can easily walk out of there. So, red of the meter on the T-pin in the tan wire at the low beam, black of the meter at the negative battery. So what we wanna do is we wanna turn the low beams on and get the voltage. Our low beam voltage is about 10.4. She's slowly tapering off. But for argument's sake, we're gonna say 10.4. By the time battery voltage gets from the battery and is directed to the low beam bulb, we have 10.4 volts. When we look at the circuit as a whole, there's a lot of connections to be made. Whether it's um, inline connectors, connectors going to switches, the contacts in the switches themselves, whether it's the headlight switch or the multi-function switch also known as turn signal switch, also known as high beam switch. Again, through another connector, going through a uh, DRL relay and then going to the headlights. There's a lot going on, but somewhere in this is our missing voltage. Now we can argue about this all day. There will always be some kind of a voltage drop. There is a normal, you know, acceptable limit. Finding these connectors and finding all this crap, it's just going to take way too long. In my opinion, the best thing to do is to kind of break it down into sections based on what's easiest to get to. The way I chose to do it was to isolate this section. So we'll draw an imaginary invisible, oh shit, not invisible line. And then this section. And what I basically did was I broke it down to the underhood wiring going through the connector to the headlight switch. Then the under dash wiring going up to and away from the turn signal slash high beam slash multi-function switch and then revisiting under the dash. Another thing you're going to notice here is that 
this wire changes color about four times. I labeled everything that I tested with letters. We're gonna do B to F. I wanna see the voltage drop going through this switch all the way to the low beam. So now that I know that this T-pin is situated okay, I'm gonna carefully take the lead off my meter off of it. So I've got my long jumper wire. I'm gonna clip the T-pin. Now something to note here, since this jumper wire is hooked up to a power wire, which is the power wire for this headlight, this other end of the jumper wire is also gonna have power on it when the lights are on. So you wanna make sure that this thing isn't sitting on anything metal, otherwise it'll probably pop the fuse for the low beams or do something stupid. So my jumper wire just runs across the grill here. I clip the alligator of the jumper and the alligator of my meter together and then kind of just set them in this fuse box cover. So hopefully it doesn't get disturbed. It should be cool right there. The black lead of the meter, she just loops up here to the meter itself. And then I fish the red lead through the truck. I know I could have just pulled the whole bezel out, but we've got a lot of work to do. We're actually gonna test the fatty red right here first. This is the feed that comes off of Fuse 8. Now this is reading up close to battery voltage, 12.6 volts. Since this low beam is not on right now, technically the tan wire is grounded right now. And what it is is it's that the, the ground that comes up through the black wire is going through the bulb and then back through the tan wire. Turn this headlight switch on. Let this thing settle down for a sec. Looks like we're right at about 1.5. I think for argument's sake, we'll be okay saying like 1.6, just for the fuck of it. So let's write that down. So again, B to F is going to be 1.5 volt. Now when we turn that headlight switch on, then power is gonna go through the contacts in the switch and then it's gonna come out of the yellow wire that we're gonna probe. I know there's two yellow wires in this connector, but I've already tested it, so we're good there. And this is the yellow wire in question right here. Clip my red lead of my meter up to that guy. Since the headlight switch is off, no power is going through that yellow wire. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn the headlights on. For argument's sake here, we're just gonna say 1.4. Again, I'm gonna turn the headlights off right away so I don't kill that battery. We just tested the yellow wire at the headlight switch. So we went C to F. We had like 1.4 volts. We have a couple things we can do now. Just for ease of operation, I'm gonna go to this connector C266. It's right underneath the dash, right underneath the steering column pretty much. Before we go in there, cause when we go in here and we get down there and, and start probing stuff, I don't wanna keep jumping out of the truck. So. We're going to go ahead and look and see what tests we have to do right now. And what we have to do is we have to go to D, which would be the yellow wire going into the turn signal switch. And that would go to the low beams again. And then we're going to go E to F, E being the low beam switch, which is purple at the same freaking connector. I know it doesn't make sense. Believe me, I'm not a fan of this setup, but that's what we got to do. If you already know this stuff, then I guess you kind of already know why we're going to do D to E as the last test. I just noticed that. We're going to go straight up from the brake pedal. And this, this asshole right here is what we have to get to. All of these wires in this connector, this is C266, they go up to the steering column. Do you see that screw? That's a 932nd screw. I have to take that out and then try to wiggle that uh, connector out of place so we can get to it. There's the column right there. So it's the big yellow wire. So with that hooked up, let's go ahead and turn the headlights on and see what kind of voltage drop we have. Meter's still hooked up. Go ahead and turn the headlights on. We're just gonna call it a one volt drop. On our D to F test, we had 1.1 volt. Can you see that? The purple wire right next to the yellow wire is the one I'm testing now. Turn the headlights on. Well now we're down to like half a volt. E to F was 0.5 volt. 
when you isolate this part of the circuit after it becomes a purple wire at C266 if you want to get technical about it, it actually takes place in the turn signal switch we've only got half a volt on this side so our final test is going to be D to E that means we're going to have to take another T pin and back probe the yellow wire as well as the purple wire in the connector without them touching and get two meter leads up in there without them touching either we're going to need the black lead of our meter back so I'm still going to leave him hooked up for fucks and giggles but I need the black lead to go on another T-pin. This took a little bit of finagling and finesse to get two pins next to each other back probed without nothing touching, but it is possible. Let's see what we got with the headlights on. We're at almost half a volt. So these readings don't quite match what I had the other day. They're pretty close. I'm not okay with replacing the multifunction switch because of a voltage drop issue. This switch does wipers, cruise control, turn signals, high beams. The cheapies go for about 120 and I've seen them go for over 200 bucks for like OEM stuff. And I'm not about to spend that kind of money or do that kind of work. The main reason that I don't want to fuck with this that much is because I didn't even notice there was a problem up until I did the, the quad mod. You see over the summer I put this different style front end on it. It used to have the one with like the two great big ginormous headlights, one on each side. And I kind of like this look a little bit better. So with this I got new lenses for it. Uh, the ones that came off the donor truck were really cloudy, so I just went ahead and got, you know, new lenses, came with new bulbs. And to be honest, I didn't really think that there was a problem with the headlights. Um, my personal vehicles have had HID headlights going back to like 07. So whenever I drive something that has halogens, I always attribute it the crappy view um, to just being halogen lights. However, like I said, I did notice after the quad mod that when the low beams were powered by the relay that I installed that they were significantly brighter. From, from here to the low beam, we lost 1.5, we get a little bit closer, 1.4, we get a little closer, 1.1. I'm thinking about cutting this wire right here. So we'll bring this down here. So there's the, there's the tan wire from the quad mod. What I'm thinking about doing is uh, getting a relay and going 85 to the tan and we'll do 86 we'll get a ground and then on 30 we'll get a uh, we'll get a B plus from the other uh, stud in the fuse box that we did for the other mod and then we'll just connect the other end of the tan wire to 87 10.4 volts is more than enough to turn a relay on so we'll use that little dinky wimpy 10.4 volt signal to turn a relay on we'll then have full battery voltage going down you know through 87 and up to the uh, low beams i think that about wraps it up like i said this thing just popped up doing a simple mod to the truck finding a problem we kind of went through it found out what the problem areas are and I'm, I'm, I'm just glad i was able to show this you know what i mean you guys know me i'm not going to rig up some fake shit and then say look how fast and easy it is to fix this stuff Hey, it's Christmas Eve. I can smoke a fucking cigarette if I want. We can wire anything to do anything that we want. The sky's the limit. Up to like 14.4 volts or something. Maybe 14.8 when it's cold. <laughs>